In this video, let's implement the circular queue data structure in JavaScript. We will be implementing the following methods. OnQueue to add an element to the queue. DQueue to remove the oldest element from the queue. IsFull to check if the queue is full. IsEmpty to check if the queue is empty. Peak to get the value of the element at the front of the queue without removing it. Size to get the number of elements in the queue. And finally, print to visualize the elements in the queue. Let's head over to Replit and write the code together. Now to implement the circular queue data structure, we are going to create a queue class and implement its properties and methods. Let's begin by defining the class. Class circular queue. And within the class, we're going to add a constructor to initialize a new list. The constructor will have one parameter, capacity, which represents the maximum size of the circular queue. We're going to use this parameter to create a new array of fixed size. So this dot items is equal to new array of capacity. We are also going to store the capacity in a property. We will create another property called current length to keep track of the number of elements in the queue. This dot current length and the length will be zero to begin with. Finally, we are going to have two pointers to keep track of the front and rear end of the queue. To begin with, both are initialized to minus one and are not pointing to any position in the queue. So that is our constructor. Next, let's implement the isFull and isEmpty methods to check if the queue is full or empty. isFull and we return this dot current length is equal to this dot capacity. If the current length is equal to the capacity, the queue is full. Along similar lines, we have is empty and we say the queue is empty if the current length is zero. So return this dot current length equal to zero. Next, let's implement the onQueue method. Both onQueue and dequeue are slightly more complex compared to what we have written before, so I will make sure to refer to the slide and explain the code. For now, make a note that we have five positions in the queue and their index starts at zero and goes all the way till four. The front and rear pointers are pointing at minus one, which simply implies they do not point at any position in the queue. Let's head back to Replit and define on queue. On queue, and this accepts the element to be inserted as a parameter. Now to on queue an item, we have to make sure the queue is not full. So if not this dot is full, within the if block, we begin by incrementing the rare pointer position by one. We then add the element at the rare pointer index. So this dot items of this dot rare is equal to element. Next, we increment the current length value by one. Finally, we prepare the front pointer to remove an element for the DQ operation. For that, we check if front is pointing to minus one after an element is added. So if this dot front is equal to minus one, and if that is the case, we make it point at the same index as the rear pointer. This would be index zero when we first insert. 
That is our OnCube method. Let me help you understand with the visual representation. We begin by incrementing the rare pointer by one. So rare from minus one will now point at zero. We then insert the element at the rare pointer index. So we are inserting 10 at index zero. We also increment the current length by one. Finally, if front is pointing to minus one, we point front to the same index as rare. So both front and rare point at index zero. This is necessary to ensure the DQ operation can DQ the element 10 when required. So if you have to insert a new element, increment the rare pointer, insert the element, and front remains the same since it does not point at minus one to begin with. To on queue again, increment the rare pointer and assign the element at the index. Increment the rare pointer, assign the element at the index. And do it one last time till the queue is full. We will revisit on queue in just a minute but let's move on to the DQ method as our queue is full at the moment. DQ and within the function body, we first ensure the queue is not empty. If the queue is empty, return null. If the queue is not empty, we begin by storing the item to be removed in a local variable. So const item is equal to the element at the front index. So this dot items of this dot front. Remember, dq happens at the front of the queue. In our scenario, front pointer is at index zero. So we store 10 in a variable. Next, we assign null to that index. This dot items of this dot front is equal to null. Next, we increment the front pointer by one so as to DQ the next element. This dot front is equal to this dot front plus one. We decrement the current length value by one. Finally, in the scenario, we end up deleting all the elements. We reset the two pointers to minus one as we consider it a fresh queue for future operations. If this dot is empty, this dot front equals minus one, and this dot rare is also equal to minus one. Finally, we return the element stored in the item constant. This is your DQ method. Now the code looks good, but there is an edge case. What if we have inserted five elements and removed one element? We now have an empty slot at index zero to insert a new element. However, if we call the onQueue method, the rare pointer will increment by one, and from four, it is going to point at five. What we need is for it to point at zero. To ensure this is accounted for, we use the modulus operator with capacity. So in on Q, this dot rare is equal to this dot rare plus one modulus this dot capacity. So four plus one, which is five, modulus five is equal to zero and rare will now point at the right index. 
The same holds good for DQ as well. This dot front is equal to this dot front plus one modulus this dot capacity. Like I mentioned, on Q and DQ are slightly more complex, but once you draw the Q and trace the function execution, this will be much easier to understand. Next, we implement the peak method. And this is similar to a regular Q. If it is not empty, return the element at the front of the queue. So this dot items of this dot front. If the queue is empty, return null. Finally, let's implement the print method, which is also a bit different. If the queue is empty, let's print a message. Else, we're going to have to start at the front pointer and traverse all the way till the rear pointer and print the elements. All the while ensuring we circle back to zero after the last index. In the else block, declare two variables. i for traversing from front to rear and string to store the elements in the queue. Next, we use a for loop. For i starts at the front pointer. Navigate till it is not equal to the rear pointer. And we increment, keeping in mind we are dealing with a circular queue. i is equal to i plus 1 modulus capacity. In each iteration, we append the item to the string variable. Once the for loop exits, i will be pointing at the last element, which we need to append since we stopped when i is equal to the rare index. Finally, log string to the console. And that is our implementation of circular queue in JavaScript. Let's make sure it works as expected. First, create a new circular queue instance. The capacity is going to be five. Next, let's check if the queue is empty. Run the code and we see true in the console. Let's unqueue five elements. 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. Let's now check if the queue is full and print the elements. Run the code. We see that the queue is full and the elements are 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. Let's dequeue to make some space. Console log q.dq. Run the code. And we see the oldest element 10 removed from the queue. If we now peek, we should see 20. So that works as well. If we print the queue, we should see the four elements, 20 to 50. Let's add another element and print again. Q.onQ 60 and print. You can see the updated Q. 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. What is important to note is that 20 is at the front of the queue, 
even though 60 is the element that is inserted at index 0. Hence the complicated print function. Alright, with that we have now covered both stacks and queues with JavaScript. Starting next video, let's learn about the third custom data structure which is linked list. Thank you for watching. Please do consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.